Hey everyone, Scott J. Uwe from Crucible Custom Props, Norfolk Lab, and all the forms here. So today we have a live fire uh, Han Solo uh, DL44 blaster replica on a real uh, wartime Mauser. So you guys have seen these before on my channel, um, but this is a real vintage, super old, over 100 years old um, Mauser C96. I just want to show you that it is empty, safe to handle. Um, it has a, a field marshal um, or blaster factory aluminum flash hider because it will not function with a steel one, unfortunately. We tried, could not get it to work, and it's just kind of 50-50 on these. Some of them work with steel, some of them don't. Uh, I did get a Dark Energy Creations, or the customer did get a Dark Energy Creations um, bill barrel that I had left over, but this gun is particular, and... This one and some of the field marshal ones that I tried to adapt are too large. All of the facets were too, this, this, the way these facets are carved on this particular gun is just smaller than every other one I've ever had. And, and it was just not, it, it just wouldn't fit. It, I tried to adapt them, ruined a couple trying to do it, and it just didn't work. So this I had to make custom from scratch to fit this particular gun. And it worked out just perfectly fine. Um... You have your flat underside here. You have your facets matched up as close as you can get, or I can get anyway. Um, you have to leave the chamber. It, it has to be kind of a sleeve, and you have to leave the chamber mostly intact for the handle of the pressures. So it's a cosmetic, it's a cosmetic adornment more or less. But it is permanently affixed here. The barrel is threaded. There's a Delrin booster adapter which this whole assembly threads onto the barrel. Um, we have, uh, these are real Tomtit cylinders that are hyper affixed to here with the black gasket as sealant that uh, will, it won't, should not ever come off. We have a real Hensolt Wetzler Dialet 3X scope. This one has the correct knurling and everything. This one's fantastic. Uh, it's a real scope. I don't know if you can, Got, got a smudgy thumbprint on there. Um, I don't know if that's ever going to come out. But anyway, it's got uh, four crosshairs. You can kind of see it there as I get farther away. Um, i got to clean that. But uh, this one did have soldered on feet, which were a pain in the butt to get off. But I did get them off. Got it cleaned up. Um, got it looking about as good as it can get. The The... the the problem is you solder, when they solder these, they must finish them after that or something because there's always, uh, uh, the metal is more, even though I saw it take off all the solder down to steel, as you can see, because it's blued, um, it leaves an, a hump. So I'm, I'm guessing that they finished these after they're so the feet are soldered on, or maybe it had been refinished at some point. I'm not quite sure how that works. Um, they may, we just may when they clean up their work, they, they refinish them. I'm not sure because almost all of them that have feet soldered have a hump there. Even though the solder is completely removed, you have extra material where the feet were. So it's kind of curious. I'm not quite sure. Maybe somebody else, a gunsmith would be able to understand that part. Um, but that's here nor there, but it is a great looking scope. Perfect. Um, so we have the field marshal. This is the typical sand cast uh, field marshal or blaster factory mount with the steel nuts, uh, aluminum crossbar. This is kind of modified. I did um, turn this or mill this face down so it's smooth and try to get all of the sand, as much as the sand casting marks out of it as possible. Add a couple little machine line marks and stuff like that that are more accurate. Uh, carve that one down so you can see the exposed nut and there's the flats there. Um, tried to make it look as accurate as it could. And that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, silver soldered or brazed on the steel nuts and the mount. So it's not good. The problem with the, with the field marshal or blaster factory, let me see if you can see that. See how much play or slop there is in the um the dovetail let's see if we can get that in focus well there's a gap front and back but there's also a gap top and bottom 
And what was happening under the first test firing is even though this was cranked down and loctited, it was pitching this whole mount forward on this because it was pivoting on the dovetail. So I got a little piece of uh, brass bar stock and shored up that that um, tolerance. So now it can't move at all. Everything's uh, it's, it's still in the perfect position after firing today. So it's um, that issue is fixed. But this gun had all kinds of issues when it came. You couldn't even get it apart. I had to hit it with a rubber mallet really hard to get it to separate from the upper and lower. This gun had, as you can see, some some of the marks here uh, back here. Looks like someone had taken a hammer to it or something. Um, you can see some evidence here, some hammer marks. And there's even, I don't know if you can really see it, maybe in the light you can just see the dot, 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 dot right there. Well, those are vice marks. They're on both sides. Uh, they look like vice teeth marks. Um, you can't really see it unless you're looking for it in this light. And there's, everything's covered in oil because uh, I just cleaned it. But um, so somebody had had a problem at some point. The lock frame, this upper leaf on the lock frame was bent in. And the hammer, it could move sort of, but it didn't move freely. And it couldn't come out because uh, it was bent and then these upper rails either had been in a vise as well and they were bent in or somebody had bent this in and mushroomed them out so the whole upper wouldn't move move freely it wouldn't even cam if you pushed it back it would stick so that's essential for it to function that it needs to can't unlock that cam so it can all work correctly anyway there was a lot of fitment issues uh with this thing just to make it work and the fact that it's 99.9% .9 reliable is an amazing feat, <laughs> given the fact that it had so many uh, fitment issues. It is mostly numbers matching. Um, 329967. I think, well, well, I can't remember what wasn't. I guess you'll see, someone will see it on the breakdown video, but um, what wasn't numbers matching? Uh, it was some internal part wasn't numbers matching. I can't remember what it was now. I think it may have been the sear arm. Oh, oh, the mag play is definitely not numbers matching. And that one was super stuck too. That one needed a lot of file work to get up, to go in and out smoothly. Um, oddly, the bolt stop is, is uh, numbers matching. The grips are numbers matching. Uh, most of it is. It's, so it's a pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool piece. But obviously wasn't in good firing condition until having all this done to it. And now it's a Han Solo blaster. So yeah, um, you may have seen the test firing video before this. But here's the kind of like uh, nitty gritty details video. So there it is. All right. Thanks for watching.